you know, he was uh, engaging with me about the, the, the situation over there as well. And, and our situation globally as a people. Um, and, he, and he compared that, you know, to us partying every Saturday night hard and all the rest of it. We got a lot of work to do. Holy. We got a lot of work to do. Organize now or perish, Papa Garvey said. He said that for a reason. You know, yeah, very, very, very quickly, brother. Um, okay. <laughs> brother Chakra just re referred to him uh, having just gone to Sierra Leone and back. You know, um, when uh, when the civil war kicked off mm -hmm. in 1991, it was a matter of a couple of weeks after my mother, my uncle Sid, Aunt Cassie, yeah. Aunt, um, Auntie Gwen, uh, and Auntie Etta, all visited Sierra Leone, and it was a matter of a, literally a couple of weeks after they left that the civil war kicked off. Mm. Mm. Serious business, Kings. Yes, serious business, yes. You know? Give thanks, Brother Leader. Tina, my brothers and sisters. Sorry, I, sorry, sorry, Brother Leader. Um, brother Leader, I, I, um, are you still joining us yes, for, the, for yeah, the duration yeah. of the show? Yeah, yes, I am. Okay. I I'm, I'm not in kind an of awkward situation at the moment, but... Um, Yes, indeed. I certainly will be listening in, and I'm going to try to connect by um, by other means. Give tax. Uh, that's, that's what I was. That's what I was checking in about the, the other means. Yeah. yeah? yeah. All right. But, cool. Um, I'm, I'm I'm with you. Okay. All right. Ten nine Listen, Give love. Ten nine more. Ten Although many have tried to suppress the fact, the intellectual and cultural revival of African American music, dance, art, fashion, literature, theater, politics and scholarship known as the Harlem Renaissance, whose leading lights included Baba Claude McKay, Mama Zora Neale Hurston, Mama Augusta Savage, was very much driven by the UNIA ACL. Indeed, it's declined at the co-optation coincided with the turmoil within the UNIA ACL due to the war declared on it by the USA government that resulted in the sham trial and imprisonment of Papa Garvey. The Garvey movement effectively harnessed various art forms in the cause of African liberation in the aim of a revolutionary culture that affects mass engagement. Arguably, this was an attempt to replicate culture in the traditional setting, communal and inclusive the next major artistic uprising the black arts movement happened in the 1960s during the period of african independence mm -hmm. where you had people like chinwa achebi ungugi wathiongo and osman semben <laughs> and black power activists like amari baraka sonia sanchez and haki madibuti and was referred to as the aesthetic and spiritual sister of the black power, sorry, the black power concept. This time, the counter-revolutionary fight back against the movement was less inclined to co-opt, was less inclined to co-opt than to crush, using strategies like COINTELPRO in the USA and neo-colonialism in, in the continent. This isn't to say that radical art doesn't exist outside of this period of mass activism. In essence, art can be a reminder and progenitor of revolutionary potential. As spoken word activist, journalist, cultural scientist, and the young man next to me, Tafazwa Shakara Mbandaka asserts, if the movement can inspire the arts of that generation, the movement can inspire the arts of this generation, and in turn, the art can inspire the movement. What you call a symbiotic relationship. However, most art is rendered in the current industrialized imperialistic context, almost as an end in itself, art for art's sake, for profits and or notoriety. Thus, the moment that rose two years ago after the killing of George Floyd has all but dissipated, save some mur murals of the tragic victim of heinous police 
brutality. So brothers and sisters, this evening, we ask the question, can revolutionary art thrive outside of a revolutionary movement? Where do revolutionary artists get their inspiration from? What value is art to the liberation movement? To what extent can art inspire the movement? Is there really a symbiosis between art and the movement? How can it be reignited? Our special guest that we just heard, Brother Leader Bandaka, who is our resident guest and spiritual leader of the Alkebulan Revivalist Movement. He is also an African-centered educational consultant. Brother Leader is a veteran activist of almost 40 years standing. He is a featured columnist in the whirlwind newspaper and author of the Messiah Daily Affirmations and also Education, an African-centered approach to excellence. We have two more guests for you, brothers and sisters. We have Brother M.A. Bunya, who is a Pan-African, is that Lens or, or is it French? Lens. A Pan-African Lens cultural programmer, organizer, screenwriter, and educator, and is currently in Senegal building a Pan-African multidisciplinary arts and academic research and residential co-op space. He's working with a range of institutions towards opening institutions in London, Kinshasa, the Carib and the Caribbean. Future projects include the Pan-African School of Power, Semiotics, and Cinema, uh, and Cinema Pan-African Lens Assemblies, a journal of global African lens cultural convergences, and the Black Lens Co-op a London-based filmmaker's society. Web presence for each will be published before the end of Messiah as an offering to Papa Garvey. Well done, my dear brother Bunya. And our other guest is Brother Malik Jof, who lives in Senegal and is an activist, author, scriptwriter, and personal developed coach and founder of a number of initiatives and events. Mac Mick is an African spiritualist that, that has been working with young people, students, in order to prepare them for the, for the African revolution. He has acted in a dozen films. He is also the, creation, he is also the creator of L'Etudiant, the student, the first student's magazine in Senegal with a pan-African perspective. He is also the author of Succeeding in Higher Education, The Seven Secrets to Success at University. Tenda Tenda big, big, big work. Yes. And finally, Sister Tamu Mazama, who has a very, very famous mother, I understand. She, <laughs> she is a young activist and musician. She was born in Philadelphia, USA, but has spent an extensive time uh, extensive time in Guadeloupe and the Eastern Caribbean. She was homeschooled by her mother, leading Afrocentric scholar Mama Ama Mazama since the first grade. Wow. Sister Tamu is, a, is multilingual. She has visited 33, content, 33 countries in five continents. She is the author of 17 Dry Seasons, a representation, a representation of the world's condition through her own eyes. She is currently, brothers and sisters, she is currently a third-year student uh, at, of Africology at Temple University. Um, I think one of our guests this evening, if I'm right, um, Brother Shakara, Sister Tamu, will... Will she be bringing? Will there be a recording? Yes, turn that yeah. way. Go ahead. Uh, unfortunately, Tenam. Sister Tamu is actually engaged in a Messiah ceremony uh, at in Guadeloupe wow. as it stands right now. So she was unable to join us live, but she did send a recording, and we're going to get to that recording shortly. Um, and so, um, do stay tuned for that Kings and Queens. But just to say, she's a very beautiful, powerful, and uh, passionate sister when it comes to uh, African liberation I, I feel a deep connection to her because i was raised in the movement um and uh I, I i you know when you you have a 
you can sense when somebody's about that life, yeah? Mm. Um, uh, coming from somebody who was raised in the movement and she's certainly one such individual. Uh, and so I, I really do resonate with her spirit. Mm. And so no doubt we have to get her back live on Africa Speaks of our Kebala at some point. But I do give thanks for her for sending a recording in. But for now, let's us uh, just get the voice of our two brothers, Mac Mike uh, and M.A. Bunya, who happen to be in the same vicinity. Greetings, my brothers. Check, check. Check. There we go. There we go. All right. Yeah, we got you. We got you. We got you. Giving thanks. Giving thanks. We can hear you clearly. All right. Um, greetings, brother Bunya. Yes. Greetings, brother Shakara. Greetings, How greetings. Are you, my brother? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Greetings, brother Mac Mike. Yeah, greetings, Shaka. Greetings, greetings. Hope that everything is good. And yeah. how can I say, I appreciate your the first part of your broadcast. Yes, it was sir. nice. Yes, sir. Give thanks. And we appreciate you both for, for being here. Yeah. Right. Um, Gre greetings, my brother. Oh, greetings. So th this, by the way, yeah, my, the, my co-host in the studio is brother Omowale Kwao. Yeah. Uh, and so... If you hear the other voice, then you know who it is. Tenda Wari. Tenda Wari. All right. Um, so, my brothers, I'm, I'm, because our sister Tammy was unable to be with us live, what I'm going to do is begin by playing her audio, um, just so we can, um, the, the gathered strong can hear her voice, and then we're going to get into a conversation with you, yeah? The, the audio is approximately three minutes, so just, 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 just stay tuned, and we're going to get back to you. Tenda Wari. Yes, loud and clear. All right, Kings and Queens, so we're going to hear from Sister Tamu, who's over there in Guadeloupe at the moment, uh, engaged in uh, a Messiah um, uh, observance, uh, and she was uh, kind enough to record uh, an audio um, uh, with her perspective on this subject. What's up, family? So we're going to hear from her uh, now. Tenna Mwari. What's up, family? This is Tamu Mazama sending you this message from Guadeloupe, which is located in the Caribbean. So I would first like to say that I am extremely honored um, and happy to be a part of this very important conversation that I know will enlighten many African people. Um, I would like to also announce that Afrocentricity International in Guadeloupe will be co-hosting with the Zambezi organization, which is a pan-African organization that focuses on on promoting and uplifting African culture will be hosting an event on Marcus Garvey this week. This is extremely exciting because there will be several speakers, including Ama Mazama, who will talk to us about who Marcus Garvey was and what he has contributed to African people. There will also be local vendors from Guadeloupe who will put Marcus Garvey at the forefront of their items. So this will be a very important celebration to honor and to be inspired by Marcus Garvey. Um, and to present myself, I am a third year Africology student at Temple University. I have written two books that talk about the place of African spirituality in African light liberation. I'm also a radio host with a program that focuses on building bridges between the young people of the diaspora and the continent. I am also a active member of Afrocentricity International that is a organization committed to the African Renaissance based on the revival of African spirituality. And last but not least, I am a singer and I like to say that I sing songs for Africa and its children. So I really have dedicated myself to sing for the African Renaissance. Um, and many of my songs are for African divinities, are to, to venerate them um, and to connect people to these divinities. So I myself will be par participating in the Marcus Garvey event. Um, and I will be performing a song that I have composed for our great hero, Marcus Garvey. Um, and I believe that art restores the truth. Um, and Afrocentricity allows African art to tell our truth to our people. Um, and this is particularly important when it comes to our history and to our culture because it has been suppressed for so long. So as a young artist in the African Renaissance movement, I have dedicated my life to help restore our people's consciousness um, and 
I believe that art inspires us to be strong and encourages us to be ourselves. And like our noble ancestor, Marcus Garvey once said, up you mighty race. Ashe. Ashe. Tenamwari Kings and Queens, that was Sister Tamu Mazama, the daughter mm-hmm. of Mambo Ama Mazama. We had the pleasure of meeting her actually in 2006 when Mama Ama came over here for Africa Liberation Day and we had the pleasure of hosting them at our headquarters uh, in East London. And But she was little more than a baby at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was over here um, a few years ago um, for the Black Carpet Awards um, and uh, we met her then as well. Mm-hmm. Had a good, the pleasure of buying her book. I have her book. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, so now she'd be in her early twenties, yeah. Okay. And as I said, you can you can st- you can hear the, the assuredness and the confidence yes. of her role and her dedication of her life, commitment, to, man. Yeah, man, to the to the liberation <laughs> of African people. And so, like I said, I feel a deep synergy, <laughs> yeah, mm. with my young sister. Symbiosis, but, yeah, yeah, of course. Because <laughs> I, I, that we depend, you know what I mean. So we we, we just give thanks for that, and, mm. I, and I love to see, it and I, I want to connect more with with the sister, um, and and learn and grow and forward this this liberation fight. and the fact that she's connecting our youth 100%, in the diaspora 100%, with our youth 100%. in mama africa that is powerful 100 percent. and and we, need, at, we and need to link her at definitely. some point in life my passport powerful. will look like hers you know what i mean <laughs> when you hear she's early 20s and 33 countries already uh-huh. that's very serious business yeah she's just so, a warm-up and that we say <laughs> and no she and she does it herself she's and she not and she i know she's been to senegal where our brothers emma and mike are now mm-hmm, and she traveled mm-hmm. to many countries and she, she will travel by herself but she's she's an organizer brothers mm-hmm. and sisters and so we want to just give thanks for her energy and no doubt we're going to hear from her again soon and that just hearing her voice was very very important mm-hmm, she's a rising mm-hmm. she's a rising black star um and so we just want to honor uh sister tamu mazama and with that my brothers uh bunya and mac mike uh greetings and welcome <laughs> once again um so I, I i do believe yeah that a good place to start uh with this um is just give us yeah uh i want people to know where you do yeah and what you're going on with uh, in Senegal, <laughs> yeah, um, at the moment, what works are you dealing with? Um, and we can approach and build the conversation from that platform. Yeah. I think it's very important to give our listeners an idea of the practical work that you all are engaged in and answer our questions from that perspective. So go ahead, yeah. give us yeah. an overview. Who are we, who are we starting with? Over the... Either one, they're, they're both uh, Tendai Mwari. Tendai Mwari. Yes, yeah, so, um. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm M.A. Bunya. Um, my wife and I have been in Senegal since June. Uh, we took a trip here last year in November, November, October uh, time. Uh, with the intention of, in fact, we, we came to Gambia first and um, we made the journey across the border to Senegal in um uh, with the intention of conducting some research on the intricacies of this modality we call African cinema. Um, we connected with a few organizations, included Senti Anenga um, and some others, and our encounters were, I would say, quite profound, um, being that we were welcomed um, with open arms um, and we um, were introduced to another organization called Sini Banlieu. Uh, which is a cooperative filmmaking organization um, which was birthed by, if I I get this wrong, you can correct me, yeah? Uh, uh, Mr. Abdelaziz Boy? That's it, yeah. Yes. So who is a spiritual father (laughs) to to Shakara smiling. (laughs) He's a spiritual father of um, this uh, group of, uh, well, sorry, multi-generational group of young people and maybe now a little bit older, I suppose, um, who have who are central to the rebirth of cinema in Senegal. Um, if the viewers don't, sorry, the listeners don't, don't necessarily know, Senegal is widely regarded as the home of African cinema mm-hmm. um, right. due right. to right. Its, some of its um, early practitioners, such as Usman Semben mm-hmm. and uh, Jibril, Jibril, Job. Jibril Job Mambeti. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yes, um, over a period of time, um, that cinematic engagement, and, and we can come back to this subject when we discuss, um, you know, the absence of le- revolutionary movements mm-hmm. coinciding with a decline in revolutionary art yes, expression. Yes, yes. We can discuss that. 
Um, but yes, yeah, so this organization that we encountered uh, again welcomed us with open arms. I was there yesterday actually, mm. and um, from that, an, uh, um, a relationship grew with one of the uh, primary movers, a man called Karage. Right, right. Um, and we were offered the opportunity to join his organization, Filmica, which is um, an African cinema distribution platform. Okay. Um, this, this particular um, platform and uh, movement is designed to address um, colonial stranglehold over the distribution of African cinema. Okay. We have films in, in being made in a particular region of the country, for example, and those films c cannot get shown in that region itself mm -hmm. because of the relationships between the distributors and the power structures mm -hmm. and economics that are involved in this process. So, okay. um, so yeah, so our um, encounters brought us back here to continue the works and then also to take the opportunity to yes. further um, the agenda that my wife and I have, mm -hmm. which is to connect uh, and build cooperatives across the continent and yes. diaspora. Um, my, my so brother, we're I'm, here in sorry. Banza Kunda. Mm -hmm. I have to learn to say it properly. The Banza, I think it's Banza and Kunda. Kunda, I believe, well, I know it means place or home or space in, yeah, yeah. yes. I don't know exactly. Um, in, yeah, I believe in Wolof. Probably like this. Yeah, you have Sarah Kunda, you have... Yeah, yeah. it's not a Wolof language. It's not Wolof. Okay, we'll find out. It's interesting, you know, it, there's, a, there's a word in Bantu languages like Kikongo, which is Kanda. Yeah, there's a word in Bantu languages like Kikongo, which is Kanda, which, is, which is, has a similar meaning, yeah, um, about right, spaces. Right. For the, but it's a communal space. It's a, it's, it can be a governmental space. It's a social space. Right. It's the public space for the nation, if that makes sense. So that's interesting. I, yes, I love yes. to see if there's a connection between the word in Kikongo yes. and, the, and the word in wh whichever language it comes from uh, in, in Senegal. And, and, you know um, Bra and the Banza is a Kikongo Sorry. word meaning think. Right. Yes. So we're, okay. here in, we're here in this space. This is the thinking space. The thinking space. Um, right. Yeah. But it's also, of course, a doing space. Yes, I. Yes, I. Um, so it's, it's, it's built as a cooperative initiative. Um, the building is vast. Um, right now we have up to maybe a dozen people in the building okay uh, all building towards something uh, in right. relation to pan african that's liberation that's beautiful i want to i want to applaud you my brother bunia for hitting the ground running yeah um in terms of your soldier in, in senegal and making all those connections and know that we're going to flesh out um you know more of that work in a second i do want to get um brother mac mike's response to this question but brother Omar, just just to... a quick one yeah. um tina Amuari, Amuari. brother bunia lovely to hear from you my brother um you, there, there's some interesting work that you've been doing in on these shores that that um intrigue me um particularly in terms of special ed um however mm -hmm. um a pan african lens cultural programmer can you help us for the un uninitiated <laughs> what our that indeed yeah, is our that. a pan african yeah. lens cultural programmer my brother help us <laughs> <laughs> yeah man i make that up myself innit you know <laughs> go on and well, I, you, I, I, um, I i knew uh, that i already knew that you artistic know, brother, brother bunya is my brethren so I mean, when i heard that Mino said he was exp you know he, he created the field you know what i mean <laughs> I, I just know that when i hear that stuff that Mino said bunya let's create that up you know what I mean? okay but so, yeah, you, we'll give time. you're gonna have to rescue us though <laughs> yeah, my yeah, brother yeah. come come with the, the meaning now for us <laughs> yes yes uh yes unks so um <laughs> yeah um i always put lens in quotation marks because um the, the the first lens that we we know of um as beings is is the eyes right mm -hmm. um we have an inner lens that is functioning all the time as well as far as i'm concerned and then we have our cultural lens on top of that as well um i regard lens culture as uh, in, in, as pertaining to africans mm -hmm. as the cultures Sorry, the lenses through which we observe and interpret the world and each other, right? right? Mm -hmm. So primarily, when I talk about lens, it, those are the foundations. But beyond the foundations, I am uh, screen arts. Screen arts is my area of expertise. Right. So whether it be photography or cinema, um, I've kind of wrapped those definitions, sorry, yeah, those designations and definitions into 
um, an occupation for myself, I guess. Most yeah, definitely. that's my. That's how I regard. Um, that's beautiful work, uh, Lens culture. That's beautiful work. Give thanks for that, my brother. Let, let's hear from brother Mac Mike here. Um, anything that you want to add in terms of the work that you do, um, in the beautiful nation of Senegal, and how that, how you uh, and brother Bonia have linked up, uh, uh, how, uh, how your work fits into what brother Bonia has explained already uh, in that regard. Yeah. Shaka, thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. I, I, I hope that I met uh, Shaka mm -hmm. and his wife mm -hmm. at Yenenga the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. the first time it was at Yenenga. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate his style. You know, he got a nice style. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I agree, my brother. I agree. I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah. We, ju we just introduced uh, each other. Mm -hmm. And after the second time out that it was here when I came here to, to one of my brother who worked with him, right. Kara. Mm -hmm. And we 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 accentuated about our how we can say our culture, yes, our yes. spiritual way, you know. And I I I I I, I see someone who probably who exactly think like me and who I think like, you know, mm -hmm. and we got the same position about mentoring uh, for African and black people situation for mm -hmm. African and black people dream and how we can together do something right. to, to help the African continent and the black people uh, around the world, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that, that's why we, 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 we keep connection and we, we try to work about something together. Okay. Uh, and he invited me. I'm very proud for that. He invited me to the show. Mm -hmm. And he gave me the opportunity to meet, to meet you. Yes, sir. Uh, like to discuss with you, to, to know how things are moving there, you know. Yes, because sir. Because if you are in a, in a French country mm -hmm. or in a Francophone country, it's not mm -hmm. easy to understand what happened there with uh, other black people, yes, like sir. American black people or yes, something sir. like that, you know. Yes, sir. And th th that's why there is... Um, lot of ideas that you share here but i don't really understand because it's my first time you know right right un un understood yeah. my brother and you, you did well I, I i let the listeners in when, when we first got on on stream uh brother Matt, mike did say that you know um his, his english is not as good as mine so I, I i had to inform him that my wolof is not as good as his <laughs> um you know what i'm saying and, and and so we are we are crossing the language barrier and I know my brother M.A. Bunya is very passionate about that, that we shouldn't allow language to be a barrier, mm -hmm. yeah? That we should overcome that barrier so that we can communicate. And so I'm, I'm elated to have you both here, especially because we are speaking to brothers in a nation that is considered to be Francophone, but more importantly, has many African languages, yeah? Word. That we need to get Word. in touch with and connect to. Now, my, my, my brother, I'm going to come back to you, Bunya, but my, um, we, we did mention in our show spec that Senegal is, and you mentioned earlier, Brother Bunya, that Senegal is considered the center of African cinema. And we mentioned the name uh, Usman Samben. Um, I'd like to know, um, beginning with Brother Mac, if you can, just, just um, shed some light on um, the, the impact of cinema and film uh, coming out of the nation of Senegal. Like you mentioned, Senegal being a so-called francophone country, many of us in the English-speaking world may not be too aware of the significance yeah, of uh, Osman Sambeni and others um, and the impact of their films in terms of Pan-Africanism. So if you have any insights on that, could you please share them with us? Yeah. Osman uh, Samben mm -hmm. is one of the the most important uh, director uh, in Africa, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. And Usman Samben is better known in some countries like Burkina Faso right. than Senegal, you know? There is a lot of young people here who don't exactly know who is Samben Usman. Right. Those who work in cinema, they know who is Samben Usman. But when we try to see the impact of... Uh, uh, Semben Usman art or Semben Usman films in uh, Senegalese art or Senegalese young people, mm -hmm. maybe mentality, mm -hmm. we can say that it's not so, how we can say, so important, you know. Right. There, is, there, there is some guys who are initiated to, to make films 
or something like that, or arts, or, or how can I say, mm -hmm. any any kind of arts, they know Semben Osman films. The elders, the, the old people, those who, how can I say, uh, the generation before us, mm -hmm. they they watch Semben Usman's films. Mm -hmm. But these young people don't, don't know who is Semben Usman. They right. don't read Semben Usman's books. They don't watch Semben Usman films, you know. Mm -hmm. That's why there is, there is now continuity of uh, the revolution that was, how can I say, that was shared in Semben Usman films. And if you look some, some films of Semben Usman like Chido, I don't know if you if you if you uh, you saw this film. Certainly. If you watch this film, mm -hmm. Chedo talk about the religion and how the religion was introduced in Africa. Yes. And by by the religion, so, he, sorry sorry brother Mac, not to interrupt you, but by the religion you're 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 talking about Islam, the religion of Islam specifically. Islam yes. and Christianity. And Christianity. Yes, yes, yes. Know? Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know. Continue. How this religion was introduced here mm -hmm. today we can we can see that the lot of people here in senegal a lot of young people mm -hmm. have ha, i don't how can I say they 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 didn't watch this fame right they right. don't know this fame yes, they know yes. nothing about the fame mm -hmm. you know because there is no main cinema, I don't know the room, cinema screeners where people can go and watch cinema. Right. The, 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 the cinema that exists here is uh, Semen Usman. Mm. It, 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 it have the Semen Usman's name, but it's not, it's not, it, it, it don't help us. Right. You know, to understand, right. They do, they do fit all kind of films, you mm, know, mm. Hollywood films, something like that, you know. Mm. We don't have platforms also where we can share our films. That's why I supported Kara mm -hmm. since when he started his project because I know how this project can be important for mm -hmm. sharing our films and for making our films right. view by uh, watched by our people you okay. know so we can say that there is some young uh, cinematographic dire director yes that that have the revolution uh, in their mind they right. know that we need to make films that can change the mentality of our people okay. of our young people and we have by arts contribute to change our uh, our country i can say I, I won't say our country but okay the black people life and the the, the african the african life yes sir we can we can so to uh, if i i i can say that they the cinema of Semben have a few impact, but it's not so, it's not too okay. much here in Senegal. Beautiful. But if you go somewhere in Burkina Faso, right. they know who is Semben and they have done right. something with him. Right. He got a statue there in, in Burkina Faso, but right. here there is nothing that can, right. uh, how we can say, that can give us information about the dimension of, of Semben Usman. Yes, yes. Give, give him thanks, brother Mac Mike, yeah. I'm, I'm going to get some insight from you as well, Bunya, on that question. Just to give um, our listeners um, some understanding, the film that brother Mac Mike mentioned, Chedo, yeah, spelled C-E-D-D-O, um, is one of Usman Semben's most popular films. And as our brother has informed us, it deals with the, uh, the, the, the how Islam and Christianity came uh, into Africa and its impact yeah, on the indigenous uh, culture and spiritual systems of the region that is now currently known as Senegal. And one of the reasons why a lot of people don't know about the film in Senegal is because it was banned yeah, <laughs> for, mm -hmm. a, for a particular period of time yeah, um, um, uh, in the nation of Senegal because of its depiction of conflict here yeah, between uh, Muslim Christians and the indigenous spiritual systems and as we know uh, Islam is it, Senegal is is a, a majority uh, officially a majority Muslim nation um, and yeah but there are there's there, there are nuances to that in terms of how um, African spiritual systems have preserved themselves and I note that my brother in in uh, our brother Mac Mike's um, bio he it is says that he is an african spiritualist mm -hmm. and so I, I i would love to explore that at some point 
a, a little piece as well. But my, my brother Bunya, you, you, be, be, before we go to um, brother Bunya, because it is this, this particular texter, uh, 630 Tatenda, mm-hmm. thank you very much, yes. uh, my dear brother or sister, mm-hmm. 630. Uh, he or she says, peace all. What is the origin of the name Senegal? My friend always asked me to go to Senegal, but I always associate it to be very religious. And he, and he said it puts him off. Okay. So it kind of well, connects I, with... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get a reflection to, on, on, to, on Senegal and, and that kind of thing in a, in a sec. What, do, do, you, do you know the origin of the name Senegal? Any, any one of you? I, I can't say exactly what's the origin, but here we understand that Senegal comes from Sunuga. Sunuga means our. Peter, who's the name of the organization? Boat. Boat, exactly. Our boat, right. Our boat. Sunu, okay. Sunu means our. Mm-hmm. Gal means boat. Right, okay. right. That's, okay. what they, that, that's what they say. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, understood, have, understood. We have a. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, we have sir. another version. Go ahead. There is another version that that that, that I forgot. You know. Okay. All right, I, no don't, I, I, I don't remember. There is another version. Right. As far as I'm aware, there's no definitive. I've seen a few explanations. Suggestions. So, yes. Okay. Uh, All right. Beautiful. Give thanks for that explanation right there, yeah. brother Bunya. At some point, we'll, we'll answer the the the, um, the Texas question in terms of your experience of Senegal as a nation. Yeah. Might be might be something informative for our listeners. But for now, uh, as a as a where where you call it again? Sorry, let me let, make sure we get the terminology correct. A well, Pan African lens, lens cultural, cultural programmer. programmer. All right. Good yeah? night. All right. Yeah. So, um, so as a Pan African lens cultural programmer, um, just give yes. your give your uh, overstanding of the legacy of Usman Samben and all of the and and Senegal as a, a, a hub for Pan African film and how that has developed from uh, the so called colonial period until now. Yeah. Uh, is it, it is there a is there has there been significant development? from the time of Usman Sam then or significant regression and what do you see as the, the primary factors within either of those dynamics? Just just before you answer, just to say that there is a, uh, back in the 80s, there was a group, an organization, a, a, a arts group and organization known as CHEDO. Um, yes, I'm... From back in the 80s. Yes. Um, Sister I, I, June comes to mind well it was it was founded by uh, by um our 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 now ancestor um brother Melanie Melanie Shabazz, Shabazz, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but, but he named it after the film yeah yeah, yeah he, he named it after this film so yeah. so there's so, yeah. a connection there yes, already sir. yes sir but yeah go, go ahead brother, brother Bunya. yeah um I, I i do believe that mac mike will probably be, have a better answer than i do to this question mm-hmm. um but um, as far as so, is, could you repeat the last part of your question again? Yeah, I, I was looking at your understanding as somebody who studied like film and African film, Pan African film, in yeah. terms of the the, yeah. the the development of of African film as a revolutionary mm-hmm. vehicle from the time of of Baba Osman Sambin um, till now, mm-hmm. and whether and what are the factors that have um, featured into the progression or the regression of the medium as a as a consciousness raising or a revolutionary pan-african tool right yeah i'm, I'm basically going to queue up mac mark for this question but right. my understanding mm-hmm. is there are several factors well first and foremost um mm-hmm. i think it may be fair to say there's been a regression right yeah mm-hmm. from from the time of Osman Sembin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um some of these um are political factors in mm-hmm. fact they all be political factors but right. Um, they, they are actually, you know, the change of um, administration, as in governments and mm-hmm. their policies and their regard for cinema, right. how much money they're prepared to put in or how much money they're prepared to take out of the arts itself. Right. Senegal is known as a jewel in the world of, of art. Right. Like everywhere you go in Senegal, mm-hmm. you can see a form of expression somewhere. It's right. amazing. Mm-hmm. Right. We've just, uh, the, the Biennale, yeah. finished in june early june mid, mid-june 20 21st of june that's right yeah. mm-hmm. um which is a um every two years there's a big festival here of mm-hmm. art and um yeah so um i would say that there's definitely been a regression i do understand i mean i've had a conversation with 
an individual at some point um, last year mm -hmm. from what, another organization who explained to me <laughs> that some organizations that were dealing with cinema had to move out of their existing building and ended up in a like a essentially in a tower block in a council right. flat right. or to continue to operate mm -hmm. um, as they were previously and slowly I suppose you can call it an austerity measure against the arts right you know um, and that is that is down to that is largely down to kind of the axiology of the nation or of the leadership or of of the society um, of the education system mm -hmm. that can diminish such an important aspect of revolutionary um, uh, expression. Um, and so, so yeah, so I would say there's definitely been a regression. Um, I would also say that, um, obviously, with that, Mac, Mac explained that there's a cinema screen, a cinema complex yes. uh, named after Usman Tenmen yes. that plays Marvel movies all day. Right. right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, so you can see that there's a cultural deficit as pertaining to cinema specifically, but then there's a, a further cultural deficit in terms of what type of cinema is being shown at all, you know? So, um, yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's the extent of my knowledge in that sense. But I, I mean, I've spoken to young filmmakers here in Senegal and, um, sorry, not young filmmakers, young people in Senegal. And, you know, I concur with what Mac Mike is saying. They just do not know. You know, they just do not know. Thank, thank you very much, brother Bunya. Um, you you said that you want to queue up Mac Mike for for, for to, to expound upon this uh, the answer to this question. So I'm going to hand over to my brother just in case he wants to add anything to what you said. Yeah, Shaka, like 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 uh, Bunya said, mm -hmm. uh, there is a regression mm -hmm. when we when we when we do the um, how can I say when we try to see what was happening in Semben Usman times mm -hmm. and now, you know, mm -hmm. because it's difficult for us today mm -hmm. to identify one of the uh, cinematic uh, director who can be classified like a revolutionary in his art, you know. Okay. It's very difficult to see this. And there is another problem here. Mm -hmm. uh, when, 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 we, when, when around the world we understand Senegalese cinema. Mm -hmm. The name you can understand today is Alain Gomez, uh, is, uh, how I can say, uh, the girl, Mati Job, you know, Mati Job. Right. Mati Job. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the, their film are financed by, 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 by French, you okay, know, right. and French French don't got, uh, don't need the how can I say the young uh, cinematic guys who who promote revolution. Yes, you sir. Know? Yes, sir. And uh, that's what that's why today it's very difficult to mm -hmm. how I can I say to see this kind of film in our screens. Right. And another problem is that we don't have place where we can diffuse our film. Right. You know. Right. How we can say Semben Usman is not for us. Canal uh, Olympia is not for us. Uh, the the French Center is not for us. Mm. They have the possibility to choose what kind of film that right. we can see here in Senegal. Right. You know, right. the, the, and we have a problem with directors who make films, revolutionary films. Mm -hmm. We have problem uh, to find where we can f uh, see this kind of films. Yes. And we have a problem to 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 get uh, to finance our films, our movies, you know. Right. Right. And I, I hope that you, I, 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 if I, if I remember, you got a question, a question about Chedo. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't have a question about Chedo, but if you, if you wanted to speak on it, you feel free to. If I, I, I don't understand. You want, you want to make a comment about Chedo? About Chedo. Yeah. About Chedo. yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, just to explain what is Chedo, Chedo, Chedo mean is the name of the Semben Usman fam. This mm -hmm. this fam, mm -hmm. but Chedo mean uh, is the name of our ancestor. The uh, our ancestors yes. were 
fighting yes uh, colonization yes slavery yes you know yes and chat do come from uh, pula you know pula is a language, language in yeah. senegal mm -hmm. in africa mm -hmm. and it mean uh, warrior it can mean a yes. warrior yes and my fa my fa is a serer he he told me chat we can got two meaning of chado chado mean someone who is intelligent and who fight a warrior right i've and i've i've heard I, it I, i've heard the term chedo translated as as the, the that culture of resistance or someone who resists using his culture or something like that i've i've heard it translated as that is is there any why i i don't know i've i've heard it i've heard it translated as that i'm not, I'm not sure if that's a if that's an accurate translation or not but you can correct me if i'm wrong is an accurate translation? Accurate. Somebody who uses the coach as as a tool of resistance. Weapon of resistance. Is that an accurate translation of the word cello? Yeah, we can we, we can say because yeah, right. that's why I say that there is two two meaning. The first meaning is the fact that a cello is a fighter. Is he, he there? A cello have many values. Right, you know? right, right, right. He love himself. He love his culture. Okay. He defend okay. his his country and yes, his sir. community. Yes, sir. You yes, know, sir. and is uh, that was the Chedo who mm -hmm. was fighting mm -hmm. with uh, with colons. Mm -hmm. You know, the uh, colonizer. <laughs> <laughs> colonizer. Colonizer. Yeah, colonizer. Right. You know? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Point taken. Point. Taken. And, and by the way, having have, have still all of that, I, I I do want to commend Brother Omowali because there was a little bit of French. In, in our spec earlier and he, and he, and he negotiated the parlevu the, the francois rather rather expertly Rohan Wally, you know so you're, yeah you know yeah over, you're overcoming the language barrier you know what i'm saying yeah you know and all these things all right um um far better than i would have so we'll give thanks um now my, my brothers um uh, this this we're going to open up the line soon yeah for for callers to interact with you there are two primary questions that and there's so many questions that i want to ask you but there are two primary ones that i want to tease out prior to that point and then we'll, then we'll explore other things and uh focus on what you are doing yeah um and how we can develop african art in general and cinema in particular from here on out my first question to you both is about the fact that at the moment we're living in what can be considered to be a rise in the profile of african cinema yes um and i think brother uh mac might just uh referred to that in some way shape or form earlier but for example we know that nollywood uh coming out of nigeria is an international industry and many people when you say that senegal is the center of african film they might be confused because nollywood is considered to be the biggest film industry on the continent and then you also have netflix yeah which over the last five years three years in fact has had a significant increase in drama and film coming out of Nigeria, coming out of South, South Africa, Africa, yeah, yeah coming out of yeah. even um, other parts of the, of the continent, Senegal, Mali, and other places included, yeah? What do you think this rise in the profile of African cinema means within the context of revolutionary Pan-African activism and development? Mm -hmm. Is it a help or a hindrance? Um, I would say it can be both. Right. Um, I think first and foremost, the design, my again, my journey to um, Senegal was to engage in research um, uh, the question of what actually is African cinema, right? Mm -hmm. So um, when you talk about African cinema, you've got a few strands that need to kind of be understood and negotiated. Okay. Um, if I, if, just off the bat, if I was to, to, to ask somebody or ask a filmmaker, in fact, what aspect of your movie mm -hmm. makes or what aspects of your movie make it African? Mm -hmm. Is it the fact that you're an African uh, film, uh, as in you are from Africa? Right. Is it is it the 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 cast? Is it the script? Right. right is it right. the are the are, are the funds coming from an African source or? Right. Or even the inter, and this is even more important, the interactions on set right. are the relationships that, that occur on the set in the creation of these things. Do they have um, African cultural um, foundations? You right. know, because what you will find, what you will find, sorry. Sorry, my, my, 
Uh, one, one second, brother Bunya, sorry. We're just getting a, a premature caller coming through. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so hold, hold tight, callers. Yeah, the, the, the lines are not open yet. We want to squeeze a little piece more uh, out of our brothers. Right, the callers. Um, and, oh, and they're being rather persistent at the moment. Uh, okay. But, um, okay, callers, um, Tenamari callers. Um, brother Naya, um, hold tight. We will get through to you. And 022, we will get through to you. Yes, indeed. Very, very shortly. Thank you very much for interacting with us. You've yes, sir. Pre- you've preempted us yes, sir. by a few minutes. Yes, sir. Um, kings and queens. So, so just hold tight. Um, 322. <laughs> 322 yeah. is very persistent. May I beg you to stop for stop call right here now, you know. 322, <laughs> try and listen to your radio. Yes. And just hold tight. Hold tight. Tenna. The enthusiasm is out there, brothers. Don't worry. worry. Right, and we, we also have Brother Leader Bandaka waiting in the wings. Um, uh, and so when you're ready, Brother Leader, please turn your camera on and we'll, and we'll bring you through to the, um, to, the, to, the, to the panel. Right, go ahead, Brother Bunya, complete your, your statement. Yeah, sorry. Um, Brother Mac Mac just stepped out for a second as well. So no problem, no for, problem. That's, that's fine. Side. So, um, yeah, as I was saying, um, it can be both. Um, and I believe the, desi- the designation African cinema itself is quite ambiguous right right um right. or has become ambiguous yes, yes i yes. know that i know that there are filmmakers i know that there are white south african sorry white filmmakers who are maybe born in south africa right who are regarded as african filmmakers, filmmakers i know that right. there are films made by italians yes for example um battle of algiers which is a brilliant movie yes but it's it's filmed but it's made by an italian right Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- this 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 was part of my research trip mm-hmm. to Senegal in the first place was right. to have these conversations, and it's not the first time these conversations have been had. Have arisen, yes. However, I'm trying to inquire a little bit deeper than yes. perhaps some of the um, researchers have. Right. So because the designation is has become so vague, mm. right? Mm. It can apply to anything mm-hmm. at this point. It mm-hmm. seems mm-hmm. right. Um, you have some scholars that would say that African cinema, mm-hmm. sorry, Ukman Senben is the godfather, quote unquote, godfather of African cinema because, not because he was the first um, African person to direct a movie. Mm. No, it's because the type of movie he directed and the type of screenplay that yeah, was produced yeah, yeah, yeah. had. Uh, an African-centered gender yes. at its core, yes, yes, and yes. and and thus you, and thus African cinema is then born. Yes. You understand? Yes, yes. So so um, so so that that is one strand of. Sorry, that's that's one benefit to the rise of African cinema in general. Because you can see in the UK mm-hmm. there are um, programmers now like We Are Parable and others mm-hmm. who are and Black Star mm-hmm. who are who are putting on these films. Mm-hmm. And the popularity itself is enabling those smaller, lesser-known mm. movies to have an audience, right? Okay. That's a good thing. Um, but, but we come back to this thing of let's 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 mention the French again. Yes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's, let's speak about the French again. Let's speak about um, the limitations, the invisible scenes, and the invisible walls that exist at the level of. Um, uh, executive production funding, okay. Okay. Um, green lighting or red light in a particular production, mm. uh, influencing filmmakers to change their the, the the narrative of their film. It happens in the UK, right? Yes, yes influencing yes. filmmakers to change the narratives of their films. And and again, it's, there's a, there's a parallel to be seen in the music industry, right? Where agendas are steered towards a particular themes that may be well certainly steer themselves away from revolutionary okay. art and okay. more towards um, popul- po- um, uh, po- uh, populism, right? Mm, 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 so mm. I would, to answer the question, it's both, but it leans more towards the idea of African film being um, what we see in that populist space as opposed to what Osman Semben set as right. an agenda for us. Understood. Brother Mac Mike, do you have anything to add to the answer to this question? Can, can can you remind me the question? Yes, I, w- I was asking about um, the rise of the profile of, of film and drama coming out of Africa, principally from places like um, 
Nigeria, South Africa, and other places like Senegal and Mali and, and so on and so forth. But being featured on platforms like Netflix, yeah, um, and, and yeah. The, the proliferation of Nollywood as now what is considered to be the biggest film industry in Africa, um, and whether you think this yeah. uh, is, a, is, a, is a help or a hindrance to the development of a truly revolutionary Pan-African film culture. Yeah, I hope that we, we, we can say that, for example, if we, if we uh, for the case of uh, Netflix, Netflix is an enterprise. He is watching for money, you know, mm -hmm. and he just try to see the kind of films that African people watch or that the world want to see about Africa, you know, and they share this kind of films. Like he said, Sometime here in Africa, most of uh, those who do the cinema, they think that doing an African film, it's mean doing a film in Africa. Doing a film in Africa don't mean that you do you are doing an African film. Right, right, right. Doing a film with word, African people word. don't mean that you're doing an African film. Word. You know, uh, like Mark said, if... A, I, I, I give a place important an important place for financement. Those who finance who finance the firm, okay. they determine where what the firm can can how can say can be used for. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. for ex for example, a lot of firms here. If you want a lot of director when they want to do a firm, they write the script mm -hmm. with with the with the character that the phones are waiting for, like, 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 like La Francophonie, mm -hmm. I don't know the, the name, La Francophonie, because there is a lot of phones that have their character if you want your film to be helped by them. Right. They say that this year's we gonna help films that talk about. Uh, how can I say? I talk about feminism, right? You know, right. And if you don't write what you want, you don't make the film that you want. You mm -hmm. can say that your film defend your people. Okay. You can say that your film are African film, right? Because an African film, what makes a film mm -hmm. African? Mm -hmm. it, the first thing is to be a f uh, to be a film to talk about Africans' problems. You know, right. Mm -hmm. And after we can we can talk about aesthetic. How we can say aesthetic? Aesthetic, yes. aesthetic, aesthetic character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's the language who is used? Right. You know. Right. Now, for example, me, I'm working in a series, a, a, a movie, a series, Ser series, yeah. series, series, yeah. yeah. That we that we be made in my uh, in my language. Okay. I'm a series, you know. Right. In my language. Okay. Be because, like, like Sheikh Amta Job said, uh, the fact that our president talks in English, in French, mm -hmm. is a way for them to don't say the truth to the population. Yes, sir. Word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because they know Word. that if they use the language that the population really understand, it will be stupid. Some kind of. Some kind of some kind of discourse, some kind of words, you know. Yes, sir. And yes, population sir. will understand it. That's why they're using. The, uh, I say so. An African film, we can say if the film is done in an African language. Yes, yes. How the how the actor dress. Yes, what's, yes, yes. What's, what's the the problems that that is aborted in the film? Yes, yes. Uh, but uh, etc. Because yes. there is there is there is a lot of things that we can that we can say. But the first problem is that if the person who do the fame mm -hmm. don't really know his culture, yeah. he don't really know who who right. he is. Mm -hmm. He can't do a, a good fame in this direction, and that's the first problem ah, here right. in Senegal, for example. Yes, yes. You right. know that the Senegal have the opportunity mm -hmm. with coloniz colon coloniz mm -hmm. colonization mm -hmm. to be. Uh, tied to French. Yes. That's why you can say Tirailleur Senegalais, mm -hmm. uh, Gore, mm -hmm. and see how I can say L'Afrique Occidentale Francais. 
it uh, the capital of Africa Occidental France was in Senegal. Right, right. Most of our presidents was in France and they learned there. Yes, yes. That's that, that's why it's difficult for Senegalese to know who they are. Yes, yes. To get a vision around the world like Pan Africanism, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and to do fame for that. Mm. We are trying to we are trying all the time to to be like French, to do films like Endo, uh, do films like Frenchies, to do films like Americans, you know, <laughs> and yes, not sir. doing films like like us, yes, and to sir. share who we are, to 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 magnify who 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 we are, you know. Yes, exactly. Yes. And I, I, just to add to that, you you can you can see the if you follow if you trace back how film um, comes to a particular region on the continent. For example, with Senegal, you have the, the Decree Laval, the Laval Decree, mm -hmm. yeah, which was um, a war that the French imposed upon Senegal. Right. Or was it Francophone nations? Francophone. Francophone African nations, where they were prevented from making films. Yes. It's that simple. Yes. yes. Right? And that... And that um, that was lifted, um, do you know what, what year that was lifted? In the 70s, I think. Right. I don't know exactly. I'm not sure. Yeah. But okay, okay my brothers, ten ten my brothers, um, excellent engagement. We give thanks uh, to the two of you, uh, and uh, it is very, very inspirational. It sounds like Senegal is doing a lot for the African continent. Unfortunately, the, 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 the Senegal, Galese people and are, are maybe not getting the maximum benefit of the great work that's coming from uh, Senegal. Um, I'd like to open the lines now, brothers and sisters. Uh, the lines are now open. Uh, okay, they're coming in yeah. thick and fast now. Um, the number to call, um, 0203 -289 that's zero two zero two eight nine six five zero four. We got a couple of callers on the line. Let yeah. me start with Brother Naya. Tendam my Brother Naya. Welcome to Africa Speaks. Well, before you come in, Brother Naya, the, 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 our brothers have brought us seamlessly um, to um, the, our main question today, which I want to remind our listeners of, and I want to get a direct answer from our brothers on this soon. Yeah, at some point, can revol can revolutionary art thrive? outside of a revolutionary movement yeah so we have to look at the extent to which pan-african movements exist in our in our di various different spaces and specifically in senegal and whether how we are developing the movement itself and the art within the context of the movement reminding ourselves that as our brother mac miller just mentioned sorry mac miller mac mike just mentioned um the we call it mac, mac miller know, yeah, oh for, my the, the, gosh oh, scratch that from the record sorry, please sorry, sorry. Scratch that from the record. That'll be in the cutting room floor, don't yes, worry. 100%. Yes, 100%. Yes. Tenda Mwari. Tenda Mwari. As our brother Mac Mike just mentioned, Senegal is also the home nation of Baba Sheikh and Tadiop. Mm. And I also just want to check, Brother Lida Bandaka, are you with us? Not yet. No, he's he's here. We've, oh, we, we, oh, oh, we, right. We're we here, but I just want to check that he's, uh, that he's uh, audible. Brother Lida, are you with us? He's, he's muted, I think. Yeah, he is. Um, okay, he's not. He's, he's clearly not with us at the moment. All right, Brother Naya, Tenda Mwari. Go ahead, Brother Nye. Welcome to Africa Speaks. Oh, so hold, hold on, Brother Nye. Sorry. Other one. Tell me why, Brother Nye? Brother Nye. Brother Nye appears to be muted. All right. We're going we're to come back to Brother Nye. I think we've got another. Okay. No, Brother Nye has no, left. Brother so Naya the, eight, the left. 837. Yeah, tell me why you're live with Africa Speaks of our Kebalan. What's your name and where you're calling from? I'm fine, sir. Say no more, brother Kwame Abwaji. How are you as well? Giving thanks and praises, my dear brother. Yeah, and greetings to my brothers as well. Uh, and, and an excellent debate tonight. Uh, we, we, in my opinion, we've got, as Africans, we've played a major role in films. I mean, Brother Shakura is totally right. I mean, if you look at the Lord of the Woods film industry in Nigeria, in my opinion, it's the best of them all. Because we, when you look at this, it, it talks about love. It talks about pain. It talks about, I mean, family. It talks about laughter. This is what African cinema is meant to be about, yeah? And, I mean, the Harbour of Essence, as you, as also you mentioned tonight, yeah, it is the bedrock of, of Africans learning about our roots and reality. 
And I mean, the ones who contribute to it, as you know, in poetry, music, film, whether it's from, uh, from uh, uh, Baba uh, uh, Claude Mackay, right up to Baba Paul Robertson. And I mean, I mean, if you look at the uh, African films and, and dramas, to continue where it, 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 to do to make us be proud of who we are as African people, Baba okay. Wale. Giving thanks, Brother Kwame, for your contribution uh, to the no show. Problem. Tenda Mwadi, give him thanks. Take care of yourself. Thanks. Give, you give too, thanks, brother. Tenda brother Naya. Just, just, just to oh, reiterate, sorry, sorry Mark, to go, I'm, I'm conscious of the fact that our guest may not have been able to hear Brother Kwame clearly. He was just reinforcing a lot of what was being said uh, by you both, and maybe. And, um, and yeah, just wanted to big you up and was agreeing with much of what you said. There were no specific questions. So give him thanks, Tenda Mwadi. Yeah, um, brother Naya, are you with us? Tenda Mwadi, brother Naya. Welcome to Africa Speaks. What's your contribution to this evening's proceedings? Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Sir. Loud and clear, my brother. Yo, my brother. Um, some serious things are going on from the um, Skype thing, you know, but you are going now. Go to, go to, go to. Yeah, um, Tenemari. Tenemari. The filmmaker, the filmmaker, um, could you um, could he real reactualize and could he emphasize because we have a film company called Many Society, Many Films. Has he heard about it? Um, the, Brother Nair is asking Brother Bunya, have you heard of Many Films? Many Films, no, I haven't, unfortunately. He he hasn't, Brother Nair. Yeah. Yeah, so what we're saying is that um, the production and everything that he's dealing with, you know, we've got some serious things that are going on, you know, so... Um, are they Africans? Like are they Africans, bro, or are they, or they non-Africans? No, these are people, they come from Brixton and they come from Junction. <laughs> but but them is Africans in Brixton and Junction as well. So, so are they Africans or are they non-Africans? My elder, these people have been doing some films from a long time, you know, so um, they have to link up with, like, man like Smiley Culture, Arere, Asha Senator. But many films is that, they, I think they had, the, um, you know, the um, UK films? Them, uh, what's their ones up with it? Um, the UK films, man. You mean was um, them. kid no. adulthood, adulthood, and all that, all that kind of stuff? What's it, what's it called? Kid adulthood and adulthood and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, bro, how can we know them stuff? You have to do your research, you know, King. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, do my, my brother, I will tell you what you do. Do do you have? Yeah. Uh, do you know the website or or info anywhere that people can access the the information for what you are trying to suggest? And then uh, brothers and sisters can do their own research and, and, and get in where they fit in in terms of connection. But the, 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 the thing is, right, I'm not, I haven't got the permission to really say these things, you know, but I just said it. Well, give thanks, my brother, Naya. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah. OK, fine. So we, 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 we've, we've understood. Yeah. Menace Films. And you're saying that brother Bunya and, and brother Mac Mike should uh, check out Menace Films. Yeah. Yeah, give thanks, my elder. Give thanks, my brother. Uh, yeah, all right. We'll do, we'll do, we'll do. All right. Give him thanks, brother Bunya. Um, all right. Um, kings and queens, the number to call is 0203-289-6504. You can do that uh, just as uh, brother Naya and brother Kwame have done. You can also text us on 073-779-207. Zero three, yeah, that's zero seven, uh, three seven seven nine two zero seven zero three. One more time, the call in number is zero two zero three, uh, two eight nine six five zero four. Um, right, um, brother leader, just let me know when you're ready and we'll, and we'll bring you through properly. Um, but let's get back to this, um, question in terms of putting the the art within the context of a pan African movement. Give our listeners, yeah. Uh, an idea of uh, the extent to which a Pan-African movement exists in the nation of Senegal. Uh, 
repeat uh, repeat the question please yes my brother Shaka. D- yes sir no, no problem yeah just um t- I, I, i'm kind of trying to get a flavor because our main question today is uh can revolutionary art thrive outside of a revolutionary movement can our revolutionary art grow and develop and be effective outside of a revolutionary movement yeah so the question is on being on the ground in senegal to what extent does a a, a pan-african revolutionary movement exist yeah um and is the art in senegal really a reflection of the existence or lack of existence of a viable pan-african revolutionary movement in senegal Mm-hmm. If I if I if if I understand you asking if mm-hmm. it exists a revolutionary movement in the art in Senegal. Yes, in, that's in, the question. In, if if a movement exists in Senegal and w- and what impact the is that movement having movement on the art? Or the absence of a movement has on the art in Senegal. On yes. the art, yes. On the art, yes. Okay, okay, yeah. There is there there is a lot of revolutionary movement in Senegal. Uh, but it's very difficult to find the impact in the art in Senegal. The the reason is simple, because we don't got the the possibility to decide the kind of film that we used to do. Mm-hmm. I have a I have uh, I was uh, I told with Mark about my film, one of my film that I wanna that I wanna how can say do. Inside mm-hmm. the university since right. five years, but is that's um, University of Sheikh Anta Diop, yes? University of Sheikh Anta Diop in okay. Dakar. Okay, but it's very difficult to find the opportunity, the possibility to do that. Okay, because there is, there is, there is some producer. Just when they read your script, they can find the revolution. In the in, in in the script, and they won't g- go with you. You understand? Mm-hmm. Um, that's true. We have maybe to be intelligent how we write our projects. But just to 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 make you know that it's very difficult to find that. So there is some people that try to do films, and they and that come from the revolutionary movement, like. Studio Sankara, you know. Yes. With yes. DJ Awadi. If you if you know DJ Awadi from PBS, mm-hmm. he he got a label that the name is Studio Sankara, and sometimes right. he do uh, films, uh, documentary about uh, African revolution, or he talk about Africa, and we can find it in 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 in, in his films. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. There is some people also, like I know one of my brothers, uh, Ja Dembaja, who try to do films in, in, this, in, in this way, you know. But we, we can also try to see the impact in some films right. of Alain Gomez, for example. Right, right. Why, I, why Alain Gomez? Because Alain Gomez, if you, if you look at Alain Gomez's films, some you can you can see that this man want to show our culture this man want to do something right certainly it's not it's not it's not easy mm-hmm. if uh, you if you are financed by 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 uh, the french the french <laughs> but we can we can see in he in her, in his films an attempt that he he want to show right our culture. Mm-hmm. He wanna. He want. He he wanna show what's wrong here. What's mm-hmm. not going. Mm-hmm. What's not going here. Mm-hmm. For example, Felicite. You can see that. You know. Uh, in Felicite, I can just give a scene where someone is. Someone is. Uh, someone have the leg, breaked. Right. And uh, how I can say his ma- Her mother is alone. She don't got enough money to how we can say to help pay for to the, pay for her son for the, for the um, operation that was for the operation like, you know. exactly and she got some money she gives some money to someone who are supposed to go to the pharmacy and buy some medicines some medicine medicine but 
when he was going, he find that there is some some the the, the corner, the those who live there, they get out to 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 speak the hymn. How can I say the hymn national? Okay. Hymn national. What the country say if, uh, next to their flag when they when they move the oh, flag? Like, uh, the song, the song of the, the song, country, yeah, national anthem. National, basically. that's it. Mm-hmm. And when you see, when you see uh, people do that, you are supposed to stay with them to rest. And he was supposed to he 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 he, he continue his his road, go to the pharmacy and to buy. It. What does mean in this film? Does mean that mm-hmm. uh, Alain Gomez say that we have a lot of problem and right. we. We can be uh, disturbed by this kind of uh, laws or this kind of shit. Yes, and yes. we can we can see a kind of uh, revolutionary act with this with this scene in this film. Okay, you know that's what I that's that's what I can say. There is some people that are trying to do, but it's 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 not it's, it's not easy. Yes, and sir. sometimes when when you are recognized like someone. Who are fighting? Mm-hmm. Someone who 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 is a revolutioner. Mm-hmm. It will be very difficult for you to find some partners and yes. to to do your films. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Give thanks, brother, brother, yeah. brother Mac. Um, I'm just to, just to clarify for those who may not have quite got what um, what the film that brother Mac, Mike was referring to. It's a film called Felicite, yeah, by a director by the name of that's Alain Gomez, yeah. Um, that's A L A. I N surname G O M I S and the film is called Felicite. So I just want to um, highlight that from uh, what our brother has said. And brother Bunya, please add yeah your perception. I'm, I'm I'm kind of focusing it in terms of where you are on the ground, but you can make it broader if you want to, because I'm trying to make it as practical yeah. as possible and as real life as possible. But yeah. what your perceptions of of the development of a Pan African movement are uh, in Senegal and the and and its relationship to revolutionary art. And that can be film, it can be music, uh, visual arts, and so on and so forth. Go, sorry, go sorry, Brother Shakara, just, just before you uh, uh, answer, my dear brother, I just want to remind brothers and sisters that the 17th of Messiah, this coming Ujama Day, this coming Wednesday, is the birthday of the Prophet. And the Arkebulan Revivalist Movement will be having our, our standard um, Messiah Day I, I liberations as Rastafari I would say mm-hmm. celebrations and it, the, for many of us we don't know the venue but the, but the venue is the Bridge Community Hut that's the Bridge Community Hut and it's Netherton N-E-T-H-E-R-T-O-N Netherton Road Tottenham N15 6 Rwanda um D. <laughs> I can't think of a uh, 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 place on the motherland beginning with D. Right, so so N fifteen six Djibouti. Ah, uh, uh, yes. But uh, you might not get it right. D from Djibouti. But either way, yeah. Tell that word. So, so so brothers and sisters, that's our Messiah iration, and we uh, hope that you will want to be part of that. We we'll get, we get the information again right. to you at the end. Sorry, my brother. One hundred percent. We've actually got a caller on the line. Yeah, as sorry, well. sorry, brother Bunya. We're, we're going to come back to your answer okay, to the question okay, shortly. All right, the court three two two right, has, gone. has just right. gone. Ten nine worry. Go, go ahead, brother Bunya. Sorry, you you are you're about to answer my question. Yes. Um, so your question was um, to what extent? Go ahead. Go ahead. Give yeah. No. Just a, a, basically, your 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 appreciation, particularly in relation to Senegal, but you can broaden it if you wish, um, in terms of yeah. location and also art form. Yeah. Um, yeah. In terms of the extent to which a Pan African movement is guiding and influencing the development of a, of an artistic culture and industry. Right, we do have a caller again. So I'm sorry to interrupt you again, Robert Bunya. I apologize. Yeah, he's, he's coming right, in. And they're gone again. So go ahead, Robert in, Bunya. I'm and on. I'm going to suggest that we that when, when the caller comes back, we let Robert Bunya finish, and then we get the caller. All right? Yeah. Ten down, Wally. Ten down, go, go ahead, Robert Bunya. Yeah, so um, I have I've definitely encountered um, Pan-African revolutionary minded individuals in senegal okay um and and in you know i spent time in gambia last year as well so mm-hmm. there are there are uh fa- i'll say there's factions um 
of groups of Pan-Africanists that have mm. that me revolutionary mentality. Mm -hmm. um, I would say is, is if somebody is a revolutionary. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. And they are an artist. Yes, yes. That does mean their art is going to be revolutionary by default. Okay. Because because the expression, the nature, because we're all, we're, we're, okay, colonization has, has, has touched every side of this, this sphere, right? So the way that we express ourselves through art has also been touched. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if we don't um, excavate the modalities that we're using um, in order to produce revolutionary uh, artistic expression, then maybe more often than not, the expression is not revolutionary, even if we do have the mentality. So, so in a, in a way, I'm answering that question to say that I'm, even those who I, who I um, encounter who do have a revolutionary mindset, they might not necessarily have the tools to um, to use art as a, a as a as a real conduit for revolutionary action uh, and response. You understand? So, um, I do believe it is my belief, my observation that. Um, Amongst the global Pan African community, um, specifically in in the UK, which is obviously where where, where I'm, I'm from, and that well, not where I'm from, where I live, <laughs> where, I, where I ended up, um, there is a there, there is a, a little bit of a disconnect between. So there are Pan Africanists who are interested in cinema, right? But academically, they're not necessarily right, right. At, they're not necessarily as well informed as they are right. politically, right? Right, and understood, then understood. the flip side is you have people from the African Pan African community who may not even call themselves Pan Africanists, right? And they're politic, they're politically um, benign. I think the word is I'm looking for. Okay. So, um, so the, the presence of a Pan African, uh, and uh, sorry, a Pan Africanist presence and a revolutionary presence in any of these countries we're discussing. Mm -hmm. Um, doesn't automatically mean that the art is going to reflect that. And, I, okay. and so, therefore, I believe, and it's my, my conviction in, in what I'm doing here, for example, to merge the two, to pr provide um, semiotic, cinematic education okay. that has a political, has politics at its core yes. to be able to activate that, that revolutionary right. um, gene inside of the Pan-African community. Right, you understand? right, right, right. Now, I, I'm, what I'm getting from what you're saying, Brother Bunya, oh, there's a caller. Right, right 322, two, you're live on Africa Suites of Alkebala. And what's your name? Where you calling from? How are you doing there? You okay? I'm good, sir. What's your name, my brother? It's brother Adi. Greetings, Brother Adi. Share your name, my brother. Yes, sir. What's... Long time no here, my brother. Long time no here. Well, you know, I lost touch with you. Just my son, who is technically advanced, who would help me to locate your number, you know, because I had the previous number, you know. Okay. So, well, it's good to hear your voice, my brother. What's your contribution this evening? Well, I mean, you're talking of Pan Africanist, you know, Pan Africanist. I mean, you know, it's, it, you must, you've got to achieve something because there's no point, you know, being a Pan Africanist and go around in circles. I mean, it's, it's all about achieving something. Yes, yeah. my brother, we agree. And, and luckily, we are on the line with um, some brothers who are in Senegal doing some good work. And so certainly achievements are, are, are in progress and on the horizon. Uh, have you heard about what our brothers have shared in terms of the work that they're doing in Senegal? No. no okay. No, no. Unfor that's unfortunate, my brother. So we're, we're going to try. Well, we're, you're going to have to catch the well, replay. I, I mean, I mean, you know, the, the, you know, things are things like the, the well, for African people, that sentimental African people. Effort has been made over here in order to recover all these things, all these artifacts, stolen artifacts. You know, one hundred percent, my brother. And 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 again, we're we're on the line with some brothers who are doing just that. Yeah, they're developing some work and they're trying to build some institutions that will enable us to reclaim our African minds. Yeah, it's particularly through the vehicle of film. Yeah, so I think I I would encourage you to listen in and, and also catch the replay. Um, in terms of yes, um, brother, Eddie, yes. what what the works of brother are doing and seeing how you can tap in and and feast from the wellspring of their efforts, my brother. You understand? Well, yeah, yeah. 
idea for every help, you know, everything that, that what we do as people. I mean, obviously, it's got to come to fruition eventually. You know, yes, people, sir. One hundred percent. Everybody doing different things. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Give him thanks, brother Ade, for your contribution to this evening's show. We stay tuned, my brother. Stay tuned. One hundred percent. Ten Amwari. Yes, brother Bunya, brother Mac, and brother Lida is is now with us as well. Ten Amwari, brother Lida. Um, can we just just want to do a sound check, if I may? Ten Amwari. Yes, we can hear you clearly, brother Lida. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Ten Amwari. Gavi lives. Gavi lives. Mosiah lives. Mosiah lives. You live. All right. Mosiah lives. Um, you. Yeah, just uh, we're going to come to you shortly, Brother Leader. Just um, just to to tease out this question from um, in relation to the politics. Yeah, um, f- from what I get, what I get from what you're saying, Brother Bunya, because o- often we, you, you and I know, yeah, our Kevin and Revivalist Movement AAPRP background, political education is is fundamental, yeah, to Pan African development. What I hear from what you're saying. Is that in terms of this symbiotic relationship, we need to develop, we, we need to not wait for political education before we develop art, but develop art as a tool of political education. Is that is that correct? Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, un- understood. I would, I, would, I, would add to, I, would, I would add to that, that with the youth, there's an opportunity to educate first before they engage in these modalities, okay. actually. Okay. And, and you know what? I'm, 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 um, I'm minded by my brother, Abiola So, yeah, from, um, um, from the organization uh, Neshon Kamit. And he's, he's quite adv- an advocate for the fact that we need uh, less education and more propaganda. <laughs> he said, yeah, <laughs> because uh, basically propaganda is designed to, to acculturate a mass population to certain ideas, yeah? Um, and so it sounds facetious and it sounds um, controversial when he says that, but I, I had a full conversation with him and he's, he's, he's impassioned by the need for us to have more Pan-African propaganda and, and not just education, if that makes sense. So give him thanks um, for, that, for that overstanding. I'm going to ask you one more question and we're going to bring Brother Leader. What, what, as you see it, are the prospects and the opportunities, yeah, for developing... Um, Pan-African revolutionary art in general, film in particular, and what challenges, what are the primary challenges do you see that we need to overcome? <clears throat> um, do, do you want to answer that question? Yeah, go yeah. on. I can? You can, yeah. Okay. Um, the question is how, uh, how I can say? What, what are the opportunities, the opportunities for developing revolutionary Pan-African art? opportunities mm-hmm. yeah so uh, i hope that the first opportunity is we have something what we can talk about mm-hmm. you know because art exists if there is not inspiration right and inspir- insp- insp- inspiration exists with the life with what happened in your life yes sir. and if a man have a fight, he have a war, mm-hmm. he have something to say, he have something to do, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So, a revolutionary can inspire artists. And with the, if we take the, the example of Senegal, mm-hmm. it was sometime with, with rap music, you know? With rap music, I can say that I have known many things in my life and in my environment, and what pushed me... Uh, to read some books, it come from art, uh, rap music. Yeah. Okay, you know, okay. I listened to some guys like Pakoti, you know, who was doing what he, what we say here, rap conscient, the conscient hip hop, you know, conscious okay. rap, conscious yes. rap. Yes, that's it. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, how I can say the uh, that come from this 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 message, mm-hmm. this energy that pushed me. And give me the how can I say the love to read some kind of books to discover who is who is Sharon Job, mm-hmm. uh, who is Thomas Sankara. Yes. It come from rap right. because they told me about my reality. Yes, yes. About yes. how I how I am supposed to do mm-hmm. to participate mm-hmm. in the development of my country, yes. of my society, of my community. Yes. You know, yes, and it come from revolution. Right. It come from their revolutionary c- culture mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because they wanted a better life. They wanted a better world. They wanted a better Senegal. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why I say that the first opportunity is that 
revolutionary give to art inspiration yes sir yes sir you know? yes sir give thanks for that give thanks for that um any okay. anything you want to add brother bunya um yeah, and then we're gonna go to brother no leader is running yeah 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 brother leader is there yeah so we, we, um, we, we, yeah, we're sorry just, that, just just um, to announce sorry brother when you just to announce we're gonna we're inside the last 10 minutes yeah and so we're gonna hear from um brother bunya then we're gonna get brother leader then we're gonna close the show all right just just yes, while tell, tell I'll, 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 I'll be waiting or, or a few hours for brother leader to speak so <laughs> yeah um so um i would say that opportunities exist when we um, release the shackles of convention that have so far kept us from making the things that we want to make, wow. right? There, there are a lot of us that are caught up in, especially those in the film industry who may have some designs to produce some revolutionary work. Wow. They won't, I have a, I have a, I have a brethren, a close brethren of mine, and we've had these discussions. Mm -hmm. He's a DOP. He works on some, you know, quite high-end uh, productions but he mm. believes he has to have that same high-end experience to make anything and that's nonsense okay right okay as long as you've got the basic tools because if you go around the continent you can see people with the basic tools mm -hmm. who make art that transcends their their means you right. understand right so um we have to remember that this in, in in terms of cinema in particular we're in 2022 well we're in we, we are where we are now right <laughs> um and technologically yeah exactly yes sir, technologically yes, sir. we're in a space where we don't need certain and certain things anymore we yes, don't sir. need them yes, right sir. we can do everything that we want to do of our own accord we just need to provide okay the foundations like filmica for example yes uh like center yanenga yes. whereby we can sew up those last gaps those last holes that um have have traditionally kept us from finding some autonomous spaces and autonomous opportunities to make the art. So the opportunities are there. Mm -hmm. If we can deprogram and decolonize mm -hmm. the, the, the methods mm -hmm. actually of making art in the first place. 100%. Thank you very much, brother Bunya. Thank you very much, brother Mac Mike. I'm conscious of the fact that that, the, uh, your answers to that question may be your last words on, on the show because of the length of time that we've got left. But I was, just want to show my appreciation to you both. Um, I know that I'll do that again before the show is done. But just to open for, for Brother Leader to add anything. Uh, we're, we're not going to give you any, any specific question, Brother Leader. Just add anything based upon what you have heard um, uh, from our two brothers and our sister. Not, for, not to forget Sister Tamu Mazama the daughter of Mambo Amamazama, who sent her contribution in via audio earlier in the show. Please expound upon uh, the subject and anything that you want to share in relation to our brothers and said, brother leader. Tell them, Wale. You're on mute, brother leader. Tell them, Wale. Tell them, Wale. Tell them, Wale. Rumbi Zokuna, Wale. Africa, to the God of Africa, be the glory. Garvey lives. Garvey lives. Messiah lives. Messiah lives. He lives. He lives. Uh, giving thanks and praises unto Mwari Nyakusika, God, the creator of the universe, from Mokoro, our great ancestors, for blessing us with this very important uh, uh, show this evening. And we give thanks for our young brothers and the enlightenment that they have given us and sharing their own insight, uh, their own wisdom and experiences. It's, it's well appreciated. And it's, it's needless to say, full of, of value. Can I suggest, going back to the beginning of um, the discussion this evening, that if an African who is fluent in an African language, only fluent in an African language, and an African who is only fluent in a European language mm. are having difficulties in communicating, the language barrier is with the African who is only fluent in an English language. I agree, my brother. I, or I agree, or a, yeah. a European language. Can I, I, can I suggest that? Yes, sir. I that is where the, the language barrier is. Yes, Never sir. Yes, sir. with the African who only speaks fluently in an African language. 100%. Because that is that should be the condition of every single yes, African sir. on the yes, planet. Sir. Yes, sir. That we are fluent in African languages first and foremost. Yes, sir. I know I don't, I don't need to convince no. present company of that. No, so I'll sir. just say that and move on. And just very quickly, 
in relation to uh, the question as to whether revolutionary art can thrive outside of a revolutionary movement. Mm -hmm. If we understand a movement to be a social force, a social force which seeks to advance the will of the people, if we're talking about a revolutionary movement, mm -hmm. then it is a social force that seeks to advance the will of the people to be free. Yes, sir. It is the determination of a people to be free. It is the determination of a people to overturn the existing social order, the existing socio-political system, the existing economic system that serves only to oppress them, mm. to overturn that system yes, sir. and to uh, put in its place a just Maatian system, yes, sir. a system in which their people have autonomy. Yes, sir. Uh, that's a revolutionary uh, movement. It is a force, a social force. Uh, and in that context, we place the revolutionary art. Art is creative expression. Mm. It conveys the aesthetics of the culture. It, 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 it conveys the emotional uh, orientation of the culture, the emotional power of mm -hmm. the culture is expressed through the art. Mm -hmm. But the art gets its direction, its context from the the movement, yes, sir. which is an expression of the culture of the people. It's how the people deal with their resistance or they resist against oppression. Yes, sir. That is part of, of the culture. So the movement, uh, the, the art forms uh, and the, the art content is incubated in the movement itself. Mm. So the movement informs and directs the art, and the mm -hmm. art gives expression to the will of the people. Mm -hmm. It gives expression to uh, the vision of the people, the ideology uh, of the people to be free, the revolutionary art form. And indeed, if we look at our history, uh, this we see the examples of this uh, in our history. Mm -hmm. We see it with the, uh, the, uh, in, in the Garvey movement. Yes. And the uh what was it called again the renaissance the harlem renaissance the harlem renaissance mm -hmm. sorry that slipped me and the black art movement of the ninth the revolutionary 1960s mm -hmm. where we see the flooring of african art mm -hmm. giving expression to the the vision giving expression to the will of the people to be free the vision of the people to be to be uh liberated to be totally uh okay. liberated mm -hmm. and so the the art is profoundly important to the movement the revolutionary movement yes sir. it cannot exist without the revolutionary movement and without the art form the revolutionary movement lacks the rhythm it lacks the aesthetics mm. it lacks that uh it, it lacks the creative expression and conveyance of the mood and the emotion, mm -hmm. the collective mood and emotion of the people um, of, of, of the day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so let me, let me submit that. I do apologize that I wasn't no problem, able yeah. to join earlier on, um, battling with some challenges uh, on this side, but, and I didn't hear all of the discussion. Mm -hmm. But what I did hear was engaging, uh, was informative, inspiring i'd like to hear the younger generation um wax lyrical mm -hmm. and you know that's what i uh, experienced not just in terms of form but in terms of essence word, not word. just in terms of symbolism but in terms of substance, substance. Yes, sir. and i think we got essence and substance with form and symbolism this evening mm -hmm. from our young brothers i salute you i heal you long may your work continue Long may it serve to transform the minds and hearts and souls of our people as we strive in the name of the most eminent prophet and king, His Excellency Marcus Messiah Garvey, to revolutionize, to Africanize time and space, and to revolutionize African time and space. I close with the words of the most eminent prophet and king, His Excellency Marcus Messiah Garvey, who says, unite, organize, now or perish. Rise, you mighty African people. 
for you can accomplish whatever you will. Rumbizu kunamwariye Africa to the God of Africa be the glory. Tenamwari, brother leader, give him thanks for, to yourself. Give him thanks to brother M A Bunya. Give him thanks to brother Mac Mike. I look forward to um, getting hearing more from um, you both, and we're gonna have to keep our listeners engaged, yeah, um, with the work that is taking place there. Know that we'll talk more. Um, I do want to mention very quickly on the, on the subject of revolutionary artists that we want to honor the name of one Baba Fela and Nicola Pokuti because this month is the twentieth anniversary of his passing and the second of Messiah in the year 1997 and I also want to hail up the name of a recent ancestor by the name of brother Ray Carlos yeah or uncle Ray Carlos who passed just four days ago uh, one who was active in our community loved his people worked with everyone uh, from um, the jazz warriors back in the day yeah um, uh, who Brother Robin Walker was a part of the Jazz Warriors as well. You know what I'm saying? And, and many others, kings and queens. A stalwart of the African community in terms of music and one who made a contribution to our people's liberation and was also worked with um, Uncle Ashaba and the African Revolution recently passed away. So as we honour our revolutionary artists, I just want to hail the name of Uncle Ray, Uncle Ray Carlos, who passed four days ago. Tena Mwari. Tena Mwari Shakara. Tena, my brothers and sisters, this has been Africa Speaks with Al Kebolan. Join us again next strong between 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. where we talk it straight and make it plain. <laughs>